Um, I wanted to, to touch on something Coach Flores mentioned when uh, Javon Holland was drafted here about his communication and leadership skill set. I'm wondering from your perspective, how can a rookie establish himself as a primary communicator or leader on the defense early on? Really for any rookie, or especially for Javon's case, I mean, he's got to develop great understanding of what we're doing and what to say. And so he's been doing a really good job of just being attentive in meetings and gathering all the information and the things that he's going to be responsible for. Because as a free safety in our defense, you know, we need him to right the wrong and really know all other individual spots and know how the 11 piece puzzle on defense works. So for him to be able to establish that, he's got to know what to say in what situations and not just what to say, but also be loud and confident in his demeanor in order for him to take command that we need him to take as a free safety or any, any position on the field. Perfect. Thank you. Go Barry followed by Safed. Hi, Gerald. Just wanted to ask you on two guys, what position they're focusing on with McCourty. Obviously we know he can play corner. He's done it for years. He's done safety recently. Which of those two do you have him focusing on? And I know with Noah, you told us last year, you didn't want to put too much on his plate. So you had him focus on the boundary and did not work in much in practice in the slot. Is that still the case? Is Noah still focusing primarily on the boundary? Thanks. Well, for Jason, I mean, he's got a lot of experience in the system. So um, ideally, we would like him to be as versatile as he has been in his experience. And so whether it be playing at the perimeter corner or in the slot or as a safety, um, you know, he's got the versatility to do a lot. So he's going to get a lot of the information and really just try to be an X out there on the field where we can kind of put him wherever. Um, for Noah's case, um, he's still going to develop as a perimeter corner, but also have the versatility to be able to play inside. I think that when we looked at his skill set, um, ideally when he when we got him drafted, we knew that he had the physical ability to do both. Now, in order to you know, focus on the communication part, yeah, there's going to be a little bit more of that he's going to have to pay attention to this offseason so he can be an effective communicator, playing inside and knowing what to do. And especially when you think about the responsibilities in the run game and how that vision changes than being a perimeter corner on the outside, you got to look at a little bit more and know a little bit more in the box as a star. Safin? What's up, coach? Bald head and beard looking fierce like mine. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Wanted to ask you, man, um, what, what you mentioned Javon earlier. What, what do you lose in, in a player like Bobby McCain? You just lose experience in relationship, obviously, to a rookie um, with Javon. You know, I think you know, I've known Javon for a long time, being on the West Coast and, and recruiting out there. Javon was actually in Northern California when I was at Cal. And so with, with Javon um, in the building now, you just kind of got to get him up to speed in regards to some of those things that, that Bobby was able to do as a communicator for us. And, and obviously we appreciate the, the things that he's done. And, and so we know with what we have now as a challenge is to get a young guy to be able to communicate at that extreme level um, in order to put our defense in, in great situations to be successful. So, um, we look forward to obviously working with him as we have. And I think that we're off to a great start just with his demeanor and his energy in the meetings. And I had a, I had a McCourty follow up to um, essentially you guys have four cornerbacks who could play on the outside. Um, and it seems like having a fourth one is also really important too, just because you don't know what happened with the first two. Um, is that kind of what went into the thought of bringing Jason along, along with the versatility and the experience, you could also be your fourth corner if necessary. I think when you look at the NFL, I mean, it's a passing league, so you can really have you can't have enough guys who can cover and who can be efficient on the back end and, and make plays. And, um, you know, with just, you know, the attacks that we see, especially even within the division, the way that Buffalo spreads the ball around, um, you can never have enough guys that can be uh, guys you can rely on in the secondary. And so getting Jason, getting his versatility, getting his experience. Um, getting his veteran leadership. I mean, that's going to be some of the things that really don't show up in the stat sheet on how he can impact the group. Um, that's going to be beneficial for us. And I think that was the idea of going into it to get him a part of our squad. Alan. Uh, hi, Gerald. Going back to Noel, uh, what, what's a fair expectation in terms of the kind of development and jump he can make in his second year? 
I don't necessarily deal in expectations as far as potentials. I mean, but I think that right now Noah is giving himself a great chance in regards to how he's being attentive in meetings and how he's developing out there on the field and developing his body. And, and you know, the expectations are going to be the work that he puts in. That's what I expect. And so um, based on what he's doing so far, you know, I, I know he's chomping at the bit to get into competitive situations to um, see how far he's come along the way um, and only going to get better as we continue to work. And so um, who knows? I think that he has the potential to do a lot of special things as we've always have uh, thought about him and his skill set. It's just a matter of putting the work in and, and having it apply on the field and being consistent in the performance. If I can quickly follow, how far along would you say he's come from the first time you got your hands on him? I mean, again, Noah was in a situation last year where he was able to really concentrate and develop. Again, this is a guy that hasn't played the cornerback position for very long in his career, not just his pro career. So um, he's developed a lot just as far as his technique, his fundamental footwork, his transitioning, um, and then not to mention, obviously, developing in our defense and what we're asking him to do. Now it's time to take really the next step and also learning some stuff on the inside and now getting a chance to know what the run game looks like and know what keys to, to, to look at and, you know, guard guys in the slot that are dealing with a little bit more space and having a little bit more presence uh, in the middle of the field or any help versus out there on the perimeter. So uh, we have a long way to go. I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat it that we don't have a long way to go, but I think that, you know, for him to be as good as I know and we know that he can be, um, we hope to continue to make strides where he can become um, what we think he can. Joe. Hey, GA, good morning to you. Um, you talked about having familiarity with Holland's game due to some of the West Coast connections. When you drill down on his college tape, what are some of the things that stood out as strengths that you obviously hope can one day translate to the pro game? There's a lot. You know, I think Javon, when you look at his college career, you know, as a freshman, you know, he was a guy that opted out. So he really only played two years of college football. But as a freshman, he played as a deep safety. You know, if you really got a chance to study his freshman film, he played as a deep safety a lot, you know, in sub packages and situational packages because of some of the upperclassmen. Um, but he did some really good things as a deep safety, um, as a young guy thrown into the fire. And, you know, his willingness to tackle out of the middle of the field uh, showed up as well. And then his second year, um, Switching defensive philosophy, Andy Avalos was the coordinator, and they really allowed him to play really more in the box, um, really more of a, a, a edge guy, nickel guy, big safety. So he was able to be physical in the run game, make tackles in the open field, be an underneath zone defender, play some man to man. And so when you evaluated his college tape, along with his natural athletic gifts, um, you can see a very versatile player. And so getting a guy like that who can be multiple, which, you know, as you guys know, we prioritize multiplicity in our defense. Um, and then understanding who the person was, me having a, a familiar background with his personality, you knew that he had that, you know, that, uh, that, that person that we wanted in our building, you know, for our, our kind of guy in a sense. So we knew that we can get a guy like this and, and work with them, and we look forward to his development. Thank you. Coffin? Just wanted to clarify on Holland, you you were trying to recruit him when you were at Cal? Is, is that where the connection first started? Oh, my God, yeah. I was trying to recruit him, of course. I was trying to get him to do the stuff that I want him to do now at Cal. But, um, you know, he had other plans, and, you know, it's, uh, it's one of those things where it just worked itself out in the end, just better late than never. Omar? I need to know how you come you couldn't close the deal, Gerald. Listen, man, do you see the nice shiny toys that Oregon has, man? They got uniforms, they got buildings. I mean, all I'm doing is selling academics. You know what I'm saying? It's just, you know, he wasn't really worried about that part. You know, he knew he was getting into the league and he's going to get a new building here in a little bit. So I guess he kind of knew what the plan was before I knew it. 